I have worked with thousands of clients throughout the years. Sometimes they decide that owning an outdoor movie system would be a better solution for them. After purchasing the equipment, many of them are using my service again. Hi, I am Paul the Outdoor Movie Guy and I own and run an outdoor movie company. I've been in the outdoor movie business for more than 10 years. If you have a question about outdoor movies and equipment, be sure to put them in the comments below. We will investigate why some of my clients who have purchased their own equipment are now using our service again. We'll look at the biggest considerations that you may not have thought of when making such a decision and if you do purchase, how to make it worth your investment. Here are the top 10 reasons why they are now using our services again. Number one, missed shows or late starts due to technical difficulties. If you are only running a few events a year, it's easy to forget simple troubleshooting methods. If you don't have a strong audiovisual background, it can lead to the most simple issues uh, leading to a late start for your event. Number two, missing equipment. When you go to run a show, something as simple as say, a missing HDMI cable can cancel your event. Um, clients owning equipment tend not to inventory their equipment after each event and replace things when they break. Number three, theft of sound equipment. Theft or borrowing of sound equipment is the primary cause for clients returning to us. Uh, speakers needed for announcements at another event, they never get replaced uh, back with the movie equipment and then you are, you're back in the silent movie era. You have no sound or audio for your event. Number four, purchase of cheap equipment to save money. Not all outdoor movie equipment is the same quality. Some of the more value priced options may not be able to withstand the constant use. Penny wise and pound foolish, as my mother would always say. Uh, these approaches often end up uh, costing more in the long run and can even put your audience at risk. A high quality screen will be safer and made to a higher standard. Cheap screens will buckle in a light breeze, whereas something like an air screen or other professional products are designed to withstand winds uh, up to 24 miles an hour. Number five is overtime uh, for employees. Uh, often parks and recreation departments are on a tight budget. Additional staffing for step, set up and striking an event can push employees into overtime, especially during the busy summer camp period. Number six, wet and damp equipment. Many events, the dew will drop at the end of the night and the equipment will be damp or wet. Equipment being put away in this state, if not dried within a couple of days, will rot the ropes and webbing and the white surface on your screen may grow mold. Electronics will fail if not dried. Number seven, staff turnover. We see staff turnover being a large contributing factor for us being used after the equipment has already been purchased. Tech staff may have left and did not pass on the knowledge. Equipment care and maintenance setup skills are then lost. Number eight, insurance. Many insurance policies and workman comp policies may not cover inflatables. Adding this cost is found not to be worth the additional risk for some cities. Number nine, equipment needs. With outdoor movies being one of the most popular outdoor events, events tend to grow in size over time. With this increase, to support the larger crowds, equipment purchase may be needed and you may need to upgrade with larger screens and projectors and additional sound equipment. Um, these larger screens and larger projectors can definitely be cost prohibitive. And number 10, safety concerns. Putting up a large screen in the wind is no joke. It takes experience, knowledge and practice. After dealing with one of these nights, one of our old clients returned to us. So here are some major considerations that you should think about. Do you do enough events in a year to make it worth it? Are your events all the same size? Can you staff the events? How many events will it take you to break even? That's keeping in mind storage costs, staffing, training, and wear and tear on the equipment. Eight musts for making outdoor screen ownership work. Number one, the projectionist or a tech savvy person on staff who is good at troubleshooting. Number two, make sure your setup staff take all the safety precautions necessary. Number three, pull out and dry all equipment the day after your event 
Uh, we have to do this for approximately 50% of our events during certain times of the year. And that's often not considered when somebody purchases the equipment. Number four, care and time dedicated to rolling and storing the screen. Uh, for example, in, in the winter, you're going to be wanting to pull that screen surface off the screen and make sure it's stored in a dry area. Uh, number five, a secured lockable location to minimize theft and stop other departments borrowing the equipment. Number six, the same group and team setting up all movie nights. And uh, when I say the same group and team, you want a couple of primary people, your, your projectionist and may, maybe a, a, a lead tech with that. And then other people, your grunt, they can change. But for your, your primary team, your group of one or two individuals who are uh, very experienced, definitely same people for every event. Uh, number seven, make sure you budget for overtime. Number eight, knowledge, your crowd size and event type will not change. So I hope that helps. Uh, like, subscribe and give us some love. Thanks a lot. Have a good one. Cheers. Bye.